Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Wednesday, August 7th, 2019. Today, Peter Strzok sues the DOJ, Trump sues California, Nadler requests Kavanaugh records from the National Archive, and DeSantis orders a probe into the handling of the Epstein case. I'm your host, AG, and with me today are Julissa Johnson. Hello. And Jordan Coburn. Hello. I called him Epstein. Oops. It yeah. happens. Yeah, it's all good. I think that might actually be his name. I don't know. Whatever. We hate him all the same. Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Uh, Jeff it's, and Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff and Steve and Jeff. Basic bitches. So it's a litigious day. And then it's a litigious day in the neighborhood. Litigious <laughs> day for a lawsuit. God. Would As you if Mr. Sue Rogers me? can get more boring. Could you He's sue me? He's incredible, though. We all do love him, right? <laughs> oh, Won't yeah. You sue Lovable, boring. My neighbor. Man. Man. So, yeah. right, there are a lot of lawsuits. Trump sues people. Everyone's suing people today. So we'll get to everything. Everyone sued everyone Tuesday, Tuesday, and we'll cover it for you today. <laughs> Uh, Wednesday morning. Hello. But first, how are you guys holding up? How's everything? It's, you know, getting there. It, I mean, it's hard to say that I feel good, but I'm feeling better. Feeling better? Okay, yeah. that's better is better than not better. Yeah. Totally. And I take those, put those, put I want those that words as a on a poster, shirt. right? Yeah, like with the <laughs> sunset in the background. Deep thoughts by AG. <laughs> yeah. It seems like people are actually reacting to the shootings with some level of let's get this done. Like, didn't the governor propose a new set of gun restrictions um, yeah. where yeah. the Dayton shooting happened? Yeah. And we've got some Republicans coming out uh, and saying, you know, we have to do something. A couple, one Republican lawmaker's, I think, niece was at the shooting. Uh, and so now he's you know, for, you know, common sense gun laws or gun reform, if you want to call it that instead of gun control. Uh, I did want to say when uh, when I make my blanket statements about, you know, these people who have these giant guns and if that if you have to have that to be able to hit a target, you suck at guns, you should get another hobby. I am not in, in including in that group in my broad generalization, <laughs> uh, which I which we tend to do as comedians, uh, like professional, like former or current military people or you know anything like that i still believe that we should ban assault weapons uh but i'm not trying to say that you know expert pistol expert rifle former marine you suck at guns i'm not trying to say that i just wanted to make that distinction because i know we have a lot of veterans who listen to our show because i'm a veteran and i just want to make sure that i'm not you know i'm not talking to you so uh (laughs) it, it would be really hard for me though to make my generalization jokes uh and then List everyone who's not involved. Yeah, <laughs> but I think the comment still holds. Nobody needs an AR-15. Right. No, I don't think anyone needs one. And, and we can talk about. Uh, we believe that. Uh, I think weapons of war belong in war. I don't even think war should exist. But aside from that point, we don't need them uh, in the hands of of others. And we can have a a debate about that without calling each other names. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to make sure that you know my fellow vets didn't think I thought they were shitty with guns, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I just wanted to put that out there because I, I, I never want to offend um, veterans, military, f- first responders, you know, people who are uh, professionals at this, mm-hmm. uh, particularly so, since I'm a veteran. There's a good piece written by, I think the URL is Scary Mommy or something. Interesting. Yeah, but she like used to be in the army and she was talking about how the AR-15 is like or they had a variation of the AR-15 which was their the rifle that everybody pretty much has in in the group that she was in and she talks about how the guns were always stored away. There was no reason for them to even be out at all unless you were about to deploy or were about to go to the range and other than that they were always safely stored and clean and there was no reason to be tatting them around and all these people that like walk around with them in open carry states or whatever are just like insane and don't need that and she makes a case for why nobody needs an assault style rifle even though that gun is very near and dear to her heart because she served her country and used that and that represents a lot for her but she's like no one needs this yeah i trained with m16a1s and in fact when you're training (laughs) in the military they give you an M16A1 without a firing pin. It doesn't function as a gun because they're like, you aren't capable of handling this weapon yet and you need extensive training before we put an, an M16A1 in your hands that mm-hmm. has an actual firing pin in it. So when we were field stripping and cleaning, we just didn't have that piece yeah. of the gun and the gun can't function without the firing pin. So, you know, even 
people in the military who are training are not even allowed to have these weapons mm-hmm. yet until they're uh, considered uh, proficient or at least, you know, not idiotic. Uh, and again, not you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jaleesa, you have a show this Thursday in Hollywood. Is that right? Oh, yeah. It's called uh, Stand Up for America. <laughs> it's a night of music and comedy. Yeah. It's, it's really cute. Politically oriented. Yeah. And... Hosted by Dana Gold. Dana Gold. He's such a cool dude. Oh, he's hosting it? Yeah. Oh, cool. He I'm was just excited. at the comedy store a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. He loved your bits. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. There was one bit that he said was funny. Yes, yes. He has a lot yes. of funny bits. You should do that bit. I should do Jordan. <laughs> Become see Jordan. What happens. Just yeah. see if he notices. He'll trip out. <laughs> I was yeah. bummed and when then, I saw And then when he says, you know, I heard that bit say, this bitch steals from me all the time. <laughs> yeah. And be like, I'm totally kidding. It's my friend. Yeah, and I just be- wanted to see what you would say. Yeah. You can pull up pictures of me and be like, is it her? It's her, right? And he's like, oh my God. Yes, that is her. Dude, yeah. I'm going to start a, a rumor. Bitch. With Dana Gold <laughs> about you. It's going to be great. <laughs> and then everyone will laugh. Yeah, and yeah. that's the bit. Oh, that's so meta. <laughs> okay. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Bits should be done off stage with yeah. your friends. <laughs> but he is really cool. I think they'll be re- I was bummed when I couldn't go because he's going to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's really funny. excited to meet him. Yeah, I've heard good Yeah, things. I'd like to see him in a political setting too, not just like strictly a stand-up one. Yeah. Because that's always different. You try to go too political in the stand-up, you turn the room real fast. Yeah, at the comedy store especially. You can walk them. It's very interesting just bringing up politics in the wrong crowd. is mm-hmm. Even in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. deal breaker. <laughs> so this is great. It'll be a place for politics. Nice. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, Jordan, have you, a good time. You have shows coming up as well, don't you? Um, I think so. Yes. I. You can see me on Wednesdays at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. And I will be also working there this weekend. So sometimes I get to open up. So I might. They never tell you. They like to tell you like 30 seconds before. It's a fun surprise. So it's a frantic like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Yeah. Um, and then you're walking around outside like, mm, what, is, what, what am I saying? What yeah. am I going to say? What jokes did I do today? You can't even go outside. You can't even even sit down whoa i sat down in a chair once and the door guy came over and was like you're working oh that's right because you're working <laughs> dude <laughs> but it's all in good fun it's yeah, all like man. nice sure. nice cult comedy fun. hazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no they're all very nice at that club it's it is truly all in good fun but that is a rule there's no sitting down because you're still working because you're a stand just because you're following comedian. your dreams doesn't mean you can rest your butt somewhere <laughs> exactly is that on a plaque the somewhere the comedy store <laughs> yeah <laughs> signed the comedy store yeah i like it all right, you guys, we have a lot of news to get to, so let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, Florida governor, a Florida man, Ron DeSantis, directed Florida state law enforcement to handle a criminal probe into Epstein's super lax jail time work release sex party, along with any irregularities with the plea agreement. So I think this is good. Uh, I think somebody was already the sheriff. I think was investigating, and but he was sheriff back then, so he was investigating himself. Yeah, it's strange. Or at least his own little sheriff's department. And now someone's investigating him. Yeah, and now so now the <laughs> governor has said um, Florida state law enforcement needs to handle this criminal pl- plobe. Yeah, <laughs> criminal I love that plobe. word. It's plobe. plobe. Does that mean anything? It does now. Yeah, let's, a, let's make that a word. Whatever you want it to mean, plobe. <laughs> but I do think it's cute that like, or it gets cute's the wrong word for it. I have some gross ideas, but I'm not yeah. About plobe? Yeah, about plobe. what a plobe is. I'm very curious now. It really no, rolls off the lips. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> it does. You're close. <laughs> oh, gross, AG. I don't even want to know. It's a lobe for... Never mind. I don't even... Yeah, my, my brain can't process yes. it. But uh, mm-hmm. you know the way that like the guy is suing the other guy who was suing himself, basically, or whatever? It, it or investigating like the guy that's... Yeah, yeah, it just looks like that scene in a movie where like there's someone with a gun to someone's back, and then you zoom out, and then someone else is like holding a gun to Yeah, their, totally. Yeah, very like old Yeah, or school. when Blazing Saddles <laughs> holds a gun to his own head and says, don't nobody move. Exactly. I'll pop a cap in my own ass. That yeah. Whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he says some other things I can't say. <laughs> But that is a brilliant film. Totally. I don't condone, <clears throat> condone su- suicide, though. Or I do condone it. I always get that word con- confused. What? Condone. That means, it sounds like a sad thing. Approve of. But it means to approve, right? Yep. Condone sounds like like a minor note. Yeah. <laughs> and I am always have point. trouble with the word sublime. Oh, because the Because it band? sounds like it means happy. Yeah. Uh, or it sounds like it means sublime. Like, oh, that's very sub, like dank or swampy or sub something like it just sounds bad and also the band is terrible but (laughs) i like two other songs so you're like that's sublime i feel like ooh, but yeah it's actually a very nice thing to say totally yeah 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 and saccharin okay anyway (laughs) words that's a whole other podcast (laughs) um hi martha barnett (laughs) uh so anyway yeah florida they're investigating their their own damn selves and we just learned that all 84 ethics complaints 
Uh, you know how we we were just talking about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, all eighty four ethics complaints against um, Brett. I like beer, Kavanaugh, uh, Boofer, Kavanaugh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the Brock Turner of the Supreme Court. I call him. <laughs> they were all dismissed. And Rep. Hank Johnson, and Dem- uh, he's a Democrat from Georgia who chairs the subcommittee on the courts, along with House Judiciary Committee Chair Jerry Nadler, issued a letter Tuesday to the National Archives and Records Administration requesting the records relating to Brett's time in the White House in the wh- when he was in the White House Counsel's Office under G.W. Bush. Mm-hmm. According to the letter, they're seeking the documents under the presidential the PRA, the Presidential Records Act, which allows congressional committees access to documents that contain information needed for the conduct of congressional business. The business they're working on are congressional efforts to direct SCOTUS justices to create a professional ethics code for them, because currently there's only one for federal judges, not the SCOTUS justices, which is what caused all of his ethics complaints to be dismissed (laughs) in the first place. Right. Uh, I think actually federal judges are called justices as well. So sorry, dudes and ladies. Uh, As an aside, these records could prove whether Kavanaugh lied during his confirmation hearings about his time in the White House counsel's office when he said he was not aware he had received any stolen Democrat. Democrat Party documents from a, mm-hmm. a mole, a dude named Miranda, who used them uh, in judicial confirmation battles and leaked them to conservative media. Some of those documents ended up in Kavanaugh's in mailbox, email box, but he testified he didn't realize they were stolen at the time. Hmm. Uh, and so everyone was asking this over and over again, like, are you sure? And didn't you know? And wasn't you had these Miranda documents? You were in charge of helping get judges, federal judges appointed. Did you use these documents? Like, what's really going on here? It's like, no, I, you know, and if they were, I didn't know. Um, so they are requesting these records. And the reason they didn't, I guess, before, uh, during the Kavanaugh hearings, which blows my mind that they didn't have everything, was because, you know, McConnell and Trump White House were like, you already have 60,000 documents. Mm-hmm. You've already taken him through this Blase Ford uh, interrogation hearing. You've already dragged him through the mud. That's enough. And so I guess the Democrats were like, yeah, you're right. I, I guess, and co- and confirmed him anyway. But remember, since there's no ethics rule in place for SCOTUS justices, the only remedy besides criminal indictment, which would be blocked by bar, is an impeachment in Congress, which has happened a few times. But again, you still need those <clears throat> 67 votes. So Yeah, and that's the Senate that you need that from? Uh, it's same impeachment as a president would go through. Wow. You write up articles of impeachment and impeach in the House, and then you send it to trial in the Senate, and they, to convict and remove needs 67 votes. Damn. The Senate's so important. It's really fucking important. And yeah. when you have to get two-thirds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh, Mitch McConnell dicks. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what's going on with the Kavanaugh stuff. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, maybe if he didn't lie on Dr. Ford, I would believe him now. But <laughs> he's already a liar in my book. So, yeah, I'm betting that he knew something about those messages, those emails. Yeah, I do think they blew over that during the hearings. And we're probably not going to ever get down to the bottom of it, honestly. That's my opinion, sadly. Yeah, and you remember how McConnell was like, we've given you more documents than any other judge confirmation has ever had to have. And they're like, well, he was th- in the White House for a really long time. We want all those records. They're now, now they're asking for them. And, and what they're saying is this is congressional business, not just because we want to try to put an ethics panel together for SCOTUS, because now, sadly, we need one. Uh, we've never needed one before. <laughs> uh, but also, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up that's going through the courts with legislation that has to do with women's rights and uh, Roe v. Wade and all that other stuff. So we really need to have this uh, as, you know, committee oversight for the judiciary and the courts and the subcommittee for the courts to have this information so that, you know, we, we can understand rulings and perhaps find out maybe motives or something like that. But mm-hmm. they, they gave really good explanations in the letter as to why they needed these these documents from the National Archives. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Eh. yeah. That's that depressing. whole thing was so awful. Yeah, he, he's got like a safe zone now, now that he's a SCOTUS member, like he's basically home free, yeah. right? And that's a reason enough to keep investigating by any means is that there's a loophole there. So. I'm glad they're even able to investigate this. It sounds like that rule could have shut the whole thing down, but somehow they're still finding a way, I guess. Yeah, well, Congress can always. Okay. But but we're still gridlocked there. Mm -hmm. 
Right, because the Senate's never going to convict to remove him. We could impeach him, but then what does that mean? There's no ethics, ethical standard saying you can't be impeached and still remain a judge. And you still, in order to get removed from SCOTUS, you would have to have, or get removed from any judge so, judgeship, you would have to uh, be voted out by the Senate. So Barr won't let any criminal charges go forward. The Senate is not going to allow any mm-hmm. um, impeachment of Kavanaugh to go forward. We're pretty much stuck. Yeah, until 2020, which we should do like a countdown of like all the reasons why we should like vote blue yeah and in 2020 we can add more justices to the supreme court but we won't be able to get 67 senators oh even then okay but we would is there i mean the benefit is that we're that much closer but it still won't really be able like to do anything until 2024 Mm -hmm. well in this specific case where you need 67 Mm -hmm. votes to do anything um where you need 60 votes to overcome a filibuster, I don't think we can actually mathematically get that number either. I'd have to double check if if, if it's even mathematically possible. Wow, we're two elections behind. But here's the <laughs> but here's the thing: you only need 51 votes in the Senate to approve another Supreme Court justice. And if we have any more retirements, uh, and you know, then we're going to be in a position where we need to have 51 senators to block poor choices uh, for the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the next president happens to be a Democrat that is for adding more justices, would we have enough this upcoming election or would that still have to wait until 2024 to add another just based on like, I guess, this power that a president has to add a justice? Uh, I think you have to pass legislation to do that, which would require 60 votes, which I don't think we'll have. So. Yeah, another Good point, that- unless they do an executive order. But if we have a Democratic president, the Democratic president is going to nominate a, a reasonable judge. Mm-hmm. The, the The problem is if, if Trump somehow wins the election again and we don't flip the Senate, those seats are up for grabs for him to fill. Totally. So that's why the Senate oh, is as important geez. as the presidency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're like one of those Rocky movies. Which one was he defeated in? All of them? All of them, pretty much. Okay, I had I had such him. an awful feeling the other day. Wait, he's defeated in all of them? Rocky? I think so. What kind of a movie series is that? I think, I think, he, might have beat, I think he might have beaten Mr. T. Well, the whole point of the original Rocky was that he can go the distance. Yeah, he the can underdog take a mentality. Oh. Yeah, that's not, really attractive. And not go down. That's mm-hmm. all he wanted to do. Okay, uh, sure. I think, and I think, run on stairs and I think stuff. he did beat Apollo Creed <laughs> in the second one. And he might have beaten Mr. T in the third one, and I, I think he definitely beat the Russia in the fourth one. Ooh. Dolph Lundgren, I must break you. Yeah, there's a new Creed, Black Creed. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I saw Creed, and that was good. And then there's a Creed two. Oh, um, which came out a while ago. I'm so behind, Haven't but I never saw Rocky Five. Is there one? Yeah, it's about his kid or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute, and that's a whole other podcast. So <laughs> so far, we've done away with words and at the movies, <laughs> and nice. now we are back to the news. Actually. Uh, in just a, like maybe 60 seconds. We'll be right back to the news. Hey guys, it's AG from the Daily Beans, and I wanted to tell you about a new satire podcast called Dexter Guff is Smarter Than You. And you can check out a clip at the end of our episode today. That'll be there. So he's basically a satirical self help guru douche, kind of like how, you know, how Stephen Colbert was a satirical conservative. Um, but this, this new podcast starring comedian Peter Oldring. Uh, Dexter Guff is an underqualified, overconfident lifestyle entrepreneur, self-help guru, thought leader, and kind of an idiot. So uh, Guff is the only person in the history of business to make the Fast Company's list of 30 under 30 at the age of 42. So that's an example. (laughs) Dexter Guff is Smarter Than You, features interviews with successful people like celebrities and business moguls. It's a one-stop shop for life strategies to help you crush it. Uh, I think I have to say it that way. It's kind of... It's kind of has this like John Ralphio, like Saperstein vibe from Parks and Rec Entertainment 720, like totally hilarious. Um, so be sure to subscribe to the show on the Himalaya app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening now. And he wanted me to let you know that I hope you're hungry because he's going to serve up some serious thought dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Daily Beans with Mother, she wrote Daily Beans. Welcome back. It's time for Sua Palooza. Um, we have a lot of suits uh, today. Uh, let's see. So first, the the Department of Justice filed an amicus brief on Trump's behalf in Trump's lawsuit, attempting to block Congress from getting information from his accounting firm 
uh, Mazars. An amicus brief is like a court filing in an appeal by non-litigants with strong interests in the subject matter. So it's like, hey, it's like a letter of support or some shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's my briefing. I've got an interest in this case. Yeah, inviting yourself to the party. Yeah, Yeah. nobody wants you here, DOJ. Right. I have a strong interest in the subject, though. Yeah. God, he's always hanging around. (laughs) So the Department of Justice argument echoes Trump's argument that Democrats don't provide a clear or specific enough explanation of the reason for the subpoena for his, you know, uh, financial documents from his accounting firm, Mazars. So the court should invalidate the subpoena. That's basically what the DOJ is sort of just file like piling on like Trump's right. Uh, Congress doesn't have a good enough reason here. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even, it's not even a semblance of a reason for legislation or, you know, whatever. Cause that's whole Trump's whole argument is they don't have a real legislative purpose. They're just out to get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how many times was Obama sued while president? <laughs> oh, I have no zero? idea. I just don't remember hearing about that. It seems like that'd be a scandal, right? They had zero investigation. Did they sue him for the tan suit? Yes. That was the tan lawsuit. And the mustard. And if he lost, he <laughs> had to mustard. wear a mustard suit. Yes, yes. He paid in mustard. <laughs> Let me see here. Did that Obama so have weird. any lawsuits? Like ketchup stain on that mustard suit. Right? What is the mustard thing? Also, the tan suit thing. Okay. I have to admit this. I do not know what that That's is. That's totally fine because it was so ridiculous. I've seen the photo, but yeah. I don't know. So he didn't obviously look It wasn't the best suit, sure. But, you know, they came out saying that it made him look unpresidential. It was his spring suit, he said. He was wearing a tan suit, which he doesn't normally do. But he said it was the first day of spring or something. So <laughs> he just wanted to look a little, okay. you know, I guess cool okay and they were just really upset and they were like this is disrespectful to the presidency so a bunch of people oh, have sued God. obama saying he wasn't eligible to be president because he was born in oh kenya my God. Mm, Ooh, that's a tough one there's yeah. u.s house of representatives versus azar et al um, house republicans lawsuit against president obama in which the house of representatives sued uh, officials within the executive branch saying Obama acted illegally in his implementation of the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. So there's oh, that. I thought it might be something like that. Yeah. I think there were several lawsuits against his dreamer, uh, DACA uh, mm-hmm. executive order. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whenever he wanted to help mm-hmm. people that weren't like the super rich. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And Trump gets it for the opposite reason. Yeah. So, he, yeah, he's been sued. But mostly, well, there we go. But nothing about the mustard. Oh, by the way, the mustard was just he was using a fancy mustard on his hot dog one day. And they were like, oh, you're too, you think you're better than us? Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. He wasn't using French's yellow mustard. Yeah, so it's like, like you own mustard or something. Yeah. Friggin' Harvard. Me, me, me. And mm-hmm. you're like, uh, That's okay. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard something interesting during one of Trump's crazy campaign speeches. Uh, it was this is just like a quick thing on his whole anti wealth sentiment, the populism thing. Did I already talk about this when he I said? I don't think so. I forget. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's basically he was like, "We're going to make America wealthy again," and then you can hear like the crowd's like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, like doesn't get a reaction. Like a movie. <laughs> no, you just, no, you didn't say that. They were doing that when he in his rally when he was talking about McCain too. Like they're all yeah, Trump, woo, making all this noise, and he's like, yeah, and that stupid John McCain, and they all kind of got quiet. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, right, McCain, and he won't let the joke die. Yes, oh my like gosh. this happened one night. At the Comedy Palace when Russell Hicks was up there thinking he was doing comedy for a bunch of people who just got out of a, a speed dating seminar mm-hmm. when actually they were retired cops. Oh, God. So he's doing these jokes that retired that, that speed daters are supposed to laugh at and retired cops will not. Like, are you guys going to do coke off each other's dicks to that? And like, we're all in the back, <laughs> like, dying laughing and he won't let it die. That's what Trump was doing with this McCain stuff. He's like, come on, you know, McCain, he sucked. He, McCain is terrible. He, I like people who didn't get captured. And he kept going and everyone's like, we're not like, going with room, you today. man. Yeah. It'd be cool if cops did do coke off each other's dicks though. It would explain a lot. <laughs> so he can't read a teleprompter and he can't read the room. That's what's going on with him. Yeah, he can't read. No. Yeah, it was, he was trying to slip in the, uh, the wealthy elite reintroduction too soon. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, totally. you guys ready for me to come out as a fucking... As a rich man? Yeah. yeah. Oh, not really? Okay. Test yeah. in the water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about the wealthy? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. F those dudes. Yeah. We'll try again tomorrow. And then he's like, hey, we're going to cure AIDS and childhood cancer. And there was a guy like right in the background who made a face that was so perfect. He was like, 
<laughs> I wish they could <laughs> see like, that. Oh, it was the guy who got taken out, right? The the, oh, the young plaid shirt guy. We oh, call him hashtag the white plaid guy? shirt guy. No, this is this only happened like last week. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that so guy was funny too. There's just another guy who was sitting there clapping so he for everything him, he's saying, he and then he says like, like the, they're gonna cure AIDS. And like, go, yeah, they're like, all right, I'll, really, uh, you that, are. Yeah, guess you're we'll gonna see how that goes. You either that or it was some anti, it was some homophobic look. But yeah, that's a weird promise. I think it was more him just being like. All right, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, like he can't believe <laughs> anything someone. he says at that point. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna cure an autoimmune disorder. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Um, True. <clears throat> but right. if Obama said it, would you believe him? Cure AIDS? Yeah. Mm. I think just because Trump's not capable, <laughs> I think Obama might have actually tried to like get the right people. It would be great. I don't medically think you can cure it. I think you can manage it and stop it from happening, perhaps vaccinate against it, but I don't think you can cure an autoimmune disease once yeah. you have it. At least not yet. Someday. I was going to say, I'm an optimist. You know, I'm thinking like 2050, if we make it, you know, global warming will kill us right when AIDS is cured. So yeah, it'll be an interesting crossover cure, episode. You can cure cancer, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know I what? have faith in the medical future. I am a doctor, future. but not that kind. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Next on the docket in Sue's Day Tuesday, uh, Trump and the RNC have filed two lawsuits against California's new law that re- would require a presidential candidate to release his or her taxes to the public if they wanted to appear on the primary ballot. And that's important. Primary ballot, not general election ballot. The RNC suit was filed in the Eastern District of California and included the California Republican Party and several Republican voters as plaintiffs. And this just makes me laugh because I feel like they found the nine Republican voters <laughs> that gave a fuck yeah. <laughs> that are Republican uh, in California. And, and they're like, yeah, what I, I, I don't know. I just this yeah, group of there's, dudes. there's some groups it's, of them, right? Santa Barbara and all that. They're out there. We, we definitely have a, a line within fif- like 50 miles of the coastline goes down oh, and yeah. then everything else is super red. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. It, it but just not makes like me the laugh. rest of the country, because it's the more <laughs> north you go, the more conservative people get. Exactly. With the exception of the Bay Area. Yeah. So Everything strange. past the Bay Area is like red. Yeah. Right? Uh, up through the top of California. Yeah. And then once you hit uh, the states above there, they get a little bluer. Mm-hmm. It's every major city. You have giant yeah. blue. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was just, I just thought it was funny that there were like a handful of voters, Republican <laughs> just voters. Just random voters. Hey, we hate this. Yeah. Uh, the suit calls the law a naked and political attack. Why naked? Mm. Against the sitting president of the United States. And, I, and then I just have a picture of <laughs> Trump sitting naked and I, I can't. Yeah. I imagine a head. naked person just frantically attacking him. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> Naked, naked, and attack. Politi- naked and political attack. Yeah. <laughs> God, what a weird word. Yeah. <laughs> no, why? Okay. Yeah. So like a flag taped to their dick or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here I come. Uh, it was filed against, uh, sorry, it was filed against Gavin Newsom and the Secretary of State of California. That's who that lawsuit is, is against. And that's the RNC. The second lawsuit, Trump and his campaign filed the second one challenging the constitutionality of the law and named the Secretary of State and the State Attorney General. In this one, they argue the states don't have the right to supplement qualifications for president set forth in the Constitution. Uh, I think Gavin Newsom in California's argument will be that this is not restrictive if the candidate releases their taxes. Uh, Everyone so can do it. We'll see. Yeah. If you're not sketchy. We'll see how it shakes out. Um, the other thing, too, is, uh, and Renato brought this up, we have primary elections where you, you like candidates, like if I were going to run for a, a state representative seat, I have to have a certain number of signatures to get mm-hmm. on the ballot. That is a, a requirement that's mm-hmm. not outlined in the Constitution. But, of course, those specific uh, offices aren't even named in the Constitution, but, you know, somebody might be able to argue it that way. But we do Mm -hmm. have a lot of requirements to get on a primary presidential ballot Yeah, that the states put on there. So this would just be another one of those. I'm having a hard time of thinking how releasing your financial documents could be misused, like, and turned against you in any way that you wouldn't deserve. Oh, you see, so you're having you know? a hard time finding a way. Right. Like, yeah. Like I'm having yeah. a hard what time finding out lose? what the problem is. Right. Like yeah. justifying why you should be able to keep your taxes private. Right. Like, Besides, like I, I don't think you in should. What in what scenario? Office. Yeah. In what scenario could you like damn yourself? Yeah. Without you having done something wrong. And this is a presidential oh, ballot. Oh, They're basically like if you overturn turn your taxes over and you're not a bad person, then it should be fine. Right. I just yeah. don't. Yeah. I don't understand. Isn't like, Trump the first one that the first president that didn't do it? So it's just really showing uh, that Nixon didn't do it. Oh well, there you go. Great company, right? <laughs> like it's just yeah. showing your cards by not doing well, it. I mean, we have to show our IDs every time we fly, and that's like a pain in the ass or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's also, you know, it has its issues too. With like. Devil's advocate, Very, the argument there would be the right to fly is not guaranteed in the Constitution. Neither is running for public office. I, I don't think it's a right. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. It's a privilege, Trump. 
I don't know. I have to look at that. <laughs> Neither is, I guess, like, I mean, I guess if you make the qualifications technically to run for office, whatever, like, citizen ship requirements there are then you can make Lived the argument that you have that right here, 35 years old yeah. yeah but yeah the travel i mean clearly any motherfucker can run for president as long yeah. as you meet those requirements that's so. what we've learned yeah we'll see how it shakes out i mean uh, we've talked to renato mariotti about this there's good arguments on both sides we've never had a case like this because we've we've just never have and so there's no precedent so we'll see what, where it goes it'll definitely this will be they sued they might um, you know, the, the judge might find in favor of California. It might go to appeal if it could go all the way up to Supreme Court. And we'll just see how it shakes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they look at your criminal record just without even asking you. That's just something they do. <laughs> so this is like another criminal record, basically. Yeah. How is this intrusive? If, yeah. If not just your criminal. Yeah. It's just do it automatically. But at least this is a way that they can start doing it. I'm all for it. I don't know. How I am you guys too. I'm, for, I'm all for transparency. I still think there should be a permanent special counsel always investigating the president. Yeah, just That's, you rotate him out, but just what keep, I think. keep the position permanent. The bad times we're in because I agree with that. <laughs> well, I think so we're in like a political revolution. Whether we like it or not, we're going to have to like redo a lot of things after all this shit settles. Yeah. yeah so yeah, if you just totally. if, especially if you listen to that live Minneapolis Richard Painter show, he's like, yeah, we're going to need new rules. Me first, we got to impeach the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy so hard. <laughs> And finally, on the docket this week, Peter Strzok is suing the Department of Justice over his firing, saying the government violated his First and Fifth Amendment rights. Uh, According to Natasha Bertrand of Politico, his lawsuit says his First and Fifth Amendment rights were violated when he was fired over his text messages, text and text messages, and then by depriving him of due process, respectively. So the First Amendment, text messages, uh, uh, Fifth Amendment um, violating his due process. Strzok says that when the DOJ handed off his text messages to the press instead of Congress, it was a violation of the Privacy Act. Uh, the Department of Justice still hasn't said who allowed Strzok's tweets to be released from the Department of Justice, and that's another thing Strzok is hoping to find out in the discovery. Hmm. Good for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited that he's doing this. Uh, waiting for uh, McBabe to file his lawsuit for wrongful termination. Yeah, they've been beating Struck like a dead horse for, so that sounds so awful. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's it's totally true uh, because that he's the whipping boy, yes. so to speak. And, and I don't mean to, you know, <laughs> I'm not boy shaming or whip no, shaming. No, not at all. Yeah. This is what we call a whipping boy. Yeah. Right. Or a he, whipping He just post, has to take will. it, basically, because throughout all of these hearings, it, his name would just get brought up along with Lisa Pages over and over and over again as these, like, damned people that are traitors. He, he's, and, the, he's the heart of the deep state. Oh, mm-hmm. totally. Right? Him and the Comey Five, Comey, McCabe, Tito. Um, uh, Gaddis, Rabicki, Bowditch. Bente. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have, uh, I think, Baker, I said, and, and now, of course, Strzok and Page. Yeah, I hope he wins some of the, these suits because then the headline can be Peter Strzok Gold. Oh, <laughs> nice. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, you're welcome, New York Times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in a high school journalism class, my teacher said, the one thing to stay away from in headlines are puns. That's hacky as oh, shit. Oh, come on. And they're the in every single puns. major publication That's you, ever. Real newspapers. Yeah. yeah. Also use puns. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that sounds like she just doesn't like puns. He was a dude. Oh. <laughs> um, and that doesn't matter really at all to the story, so I don't know why I corrected you. But <laughs> <laughs> you could just went with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just You're so like, you actually, know. <laughs> you misgendered him. Yeah. Maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe yeah. they don't like the puns. They're the butt of puns. Oh, cool too guys much. don't like puns. They don't yeah. understand brevity as the soul of wit. That's fine. Fuck them. Puns yeah, are yeah. awesome. Someone said puns are the lowest form of, of humor or comedy. Wrong. Right? I disagree. Wrong. I completely disagree as well. Nope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get emails Great on title, Julie. So that was my point. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, finally, uh, you guys, it's time to see what's trending on Twitter. Hashtag. So today is a little bit of a sad day for me. <clears throat> One of my favorite authors, Toni Morrison, has died at 88. She wrote Beloved in 1987. I read it in 1988, changed my perspective on so many things. It's a post-Civil War story inspired by Margaret Garner, a slave who escaped Kentucky in 1856 by fleeing to Ohio, which was a free state. Uh, the book, the book's dedication reads 60 million and more to 60 million and more, referring to the Africans and their descendants who died as a result of the Atlantic slave trade. And the epigraph of the book is Romans 925, quote, those who were not my people, I will call my people and her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. Oh, that's why it's called beloved. 
Or so, is it just pronounced Beloved, the book itself? Cause I, saw I the say movie. Beloved. Yeah, um, yeah. I grew up saying Beloved. But, I only saw the movie. Didn't read the books. But definitely check out um, hashtag Toni Morrison if, you, if you're not familiar with her work, or if you are. It's pretty great. And then another great quote from her when she uh, won the Nobel Prize, uh, her speech, she said, We die. That may be the meaning of our lives. But we do language. That may be the measure of our lives. Ooh. So. Ooh, I like that. Chills. She's a, an uh, she's an amazing lady. And so that is who I wanted to give hashtag to today. Hashtag Toni Morrison. Rest in peace. Very nice. All right, guys. That's the show. Any final thoughts? Um, no. I can't think of any. That was a really nice note to end on there. Yeah. I can't say it any better. I'm getting it on Audible right now. That's what's up. And I think she the movie reads it is based on that book. In the audiobook. Yeah. She reads it herself on Audible. I'm now, um, now I've got to do that again. That's incredible. Yeah. I haven't read it in 32 years. It was it was funny because I, I, I tweeted something about it. I, it was on my 8th grade summer reading list between 8th and 9th grade. And somebody said, I don't think it's appropriate for an 8th grader to be reading that book and i'm like well, why wouldn't you think it's appropriate for an eighth grader to be learning about really you know the stuff that really happened this is based on a true story what's going went down post-civil war like why wouldn't that be something i i thought it was totally appropriate it wasn't a really advanced reading list we had a lot of really mm-hmm. advanced stuff on there but mm-hmm. you know it i thought it was uh, perfectly appropriate but i agree i just remember in the south we didn't even have this on our list i just watched the movie with my family but yeah it'd be nice if they were taught more about this in school like i'm glad your school even introduced that book that's incredible yeah it made a huge difference uh and this was a catholic private school um wow and but we had all these really great um uh, their eyes were watching god by zora neale hurston mm-hmm. nice we had all that, these or watch that read that yeah yeah all these just really amazing books that really shifted or at least not even shifted but gave me a perspective that i you know that because, I mean, when you're in 8th or ninth grade, you don't quite have perspective yet right, on those things. But, but it's valuable. You look back and you say, they didn't teach us this in school. And I'm, I'm thankful for this, and I'm thankful for Toni Morrison. So I'm glad uh, we got her in t- uh, today. I wanted to talk about her a little bit. Anything else? Nice. Um, no, thank you for enlightening us and our listeners. No problem. Um, you guys are already enlightened, though. Yes. You don't need me for that. <laughs> Aww, you guys, sweet. please take care. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I've been AG. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I've been Jordan Coburn. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is produced by AG, featuring Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn, and engineered and edited by Mackenzie Mazell and Starburns Industries. Our marketing manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our merchandising manager is Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Fact checking and research by AG, Jaleesa Johnson, and Jordan Coburn, with executive assistance by Amanda Reeder. Our music is written and performed by They Might Be Giants. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is dailybeanspod.com. Take a breath. Let it out. As a general rule of thumb, humans can go for about three weeks without food, three days without water, some people a lifetime without sex. But get this, we can only go about three minutes without breath. Not only is our breath essential for keeping us alive, it's also a key practice to help you crush it. You heard me right. Breath work helps you crush it. It's beneficial to your overall health, and in some cases, your breath and manipulating your breath can actually earn you an additional twenty to $30,000 a day. Now, I'll explain that in a later episode, but I want to talk to you about my proprietary breathwork practice, guff huffing. Guff huffing is the simple but powerful act of changing the state of our mind and body through the way we breathe. Now, I've been huffing for years. It's not unusual to find me tucked away in a closet, in a back alley, just huffing away. Uh, That's what I do when I'm looking to get jacked up, when I'm looking to get creative, when I am looking to get ready to get things done, I huff. Uh, It's actually very addictive. But it is also a breath technique that I can teach you, the guff huff. Now, regular listeners of my show know that at the start of most thought releases, I ask you to take a breath. Now take a moment and notice how you're breathing. Where do you feel your breath in your body? What qualities are you aware of in your breath? Does it feel relaxed or slow? Does it feel fast or shallow? Spend a few more moments 
noticing your breath. Now guess what? You're doing it wrong. The most important principle of any breath work is the acknowledgement that you're breathing wrong. Your body left with its own devices doesn't know what the hell it's doing when it comes to breath. I don't know why, it just doesn't. That's breath work. Placing judgment on your breath is the first step towards guff huffing. Every time I tell this to new students, I always find that they are surprised when they have that moment of breath judgment that they're doing it wrong, that they're breathing like a piece of shit. Once you begin your practice of guff huffing, you will always clock the ways you breathe throughout the day. This awareness is key to being able to change it and to change the state of your mind and body so that you can crush it when you need to. Now, here's how it works. When we're in a state of stress, our breath responds accordingly. For most people, it sounds like this. But really, it should sound like this. You want your breath to mirror stress in your body. Stress at a level that it shocks your body into fight or flight. It tells your body the shit is hitting the fan, you've got a deadline to meet, and you've got to do it now. That kind of forced, deep, stressful breathing that shocks the body is a guff huff. Now, I want you to hear it one more time. <laughs> It almost sounds primal, but that's a sound that humans can make. It's a guff huff. It instantly sets your body into panic, and you finally get work done. Stress breath is the key of guff huffing. It's stress breath on crack. How do I know that it works? Well, last year, Tammy and I paid for a study to look into the effects of guff huffing, and we noticed that different emotional states are directly related to our breath. In this study, participants were instructed to create feelings, feelings of joy, anger, fear, or sadness, and then report the breathing pattern associated to that emotion. Now, the research team, uh, uh, Tammy, um, discovered that each emotional state corresponded to a specific breathing pattern. For example, when the subjects felt afraid, the breath sounded like this. <sighs> when they felt joy, it sounded like this. <sighs> and when they were asked to guff huff like this. <sighs> participants reported they felt great. It was freeing. It was cathartic. In fact, many of them said, quote unquote, this breath makes me feel like crushing it. And that's not just because they were getting paid to be there. So whether you're in a tense car lease negotiation with a stubborn car salesman, huff it. Or maybe you're trying to bake a killer cake for your three-year-old's birthday party, huff it. Or if you've been asked to deliver a eulogy and you want to bring that house down on time, huff it. Whatever the occasion is, when you absolutely know that you need to crush it, then guff huff it, and the results will speak for themselves. <sighs> and that's today's thought release. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Dexter Guff, and you were just listening to a snippet from my comedy self-help podcast, Dexter Guff is Smarter Than You. If you liked what you heard, why not head over to the Himalaya app or Apple Podcasts or anywhere you get your podcasts and download my show. Dexter Guff is Smarter Than You. I want your ears on my mouth. I hope that doesn't sound gross. <laughs>